This is a 3D printed nozzle, and this is that same nozzle creating Mach 3 flow in my garage. What makes this nozzle special is the bell shape of the diverging section. And this may look familiar because this shape is used on essentially every production rocket engine. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I designed and tested this nozzle, measured the thrust and compared it to CFD, and of course, made some really cool looking shock diamonds. Now nozzles come in a lot of different shapes, but which one of these is best? To answer this, we need to start simple. This is a converging nozzle. To make it easier to see, I printed this cross section. As the flow enters the nozzle at high pressure, it's forced to flow through a smaller exit area. This is called the throat of the nozzle. And as you can imagine, forcing all that flow through a smaller area means the flow has to speed up. But how fast will it get? We could do some quick math to calculate this, or we could just test it out. To run these tests, I built this test stand by rating my local Home Depot's plumbing aisle. I have a five gallon air tank, which will be filled to 110 PSI. The air flows from this tank to a solenoid valve. These valves are normally used for sprinkler systems, but I modified it to have a higher flow rate and less restriction. Nice. Then a pipe extension can get added and the nozzle just screws onto the end of that. I want to be able to measure the thrust. So I attached this linear rail to this piece of aluminum extrusion. And I did this just using a couple bolts. On the linear rail, a linear bearing can slide and a 3D printed piece gets attached to that. This whole assembly can move with very little friction. A load cell then gets sandwiched between an end stop and the sliding piece, which will allow me to measure the thrust. A couple of pipe straps get used to hold everything in place, and then we should be ready to give this thing a test. I'm gonna start with the nozzle that's just converging. All right, converging nozzle. Three, two, one. All right, so looking at the data from the test, the peak thrust was 28 newtons, which is actually pretty impressive. Looking at the pressure gauge during the test, we can see that the pressure starts at 110 PSI, but when the valve opens, the air immediately starts moving towards the nozzle, which drops the static pressure to 100 PSI. And then it slowly ramps down until there's no remaining pressure left. All right, collecting data like this is great, but I really want to be able to visualize the flow. Luckily, I've got just the thing. It's called Schlieren Imaging. Schlieren is a technique that allows you to visualize changing densities in a flow field. And it's how you get awesome pictures like this. And to do this is actually pretty easy. I created a setup that has a point light source pointed at a parabolic mirror. The light then reflects from that mirror and passes over the exhaust of the nozzle. And then half the image is cut off using the subway gift card that I taped to this piece of extrusion. I know, right? Very fancy. And then just using a normal camera, we can capture some pretty cool video. So with the converging nozzle attached, let's test this setup out. Three, two, one. That looks so cool. Looking at the video, we can tell a lot about what's going on. At the throat of the nozzle, there's this white line, which is actually a normal shock. This means the flow here is traveling Mach 1, which is crazy. After the throat, the flow is still at roughly 40 PSI, but ambient air is only 14. Therefore, an expansion region forms where the flow accelerates even more. Eventually, another normal shock forms, and this is sometimes called a mock disc. And then downstream of that, the flow starts to slow down and forms a series of oblique shocks. Since all this expansion is occurring outside the nozzle, there's actually no thrust benefit from that accelerating flow. So how do we fix this? Well, the answer is just to add a diverging section to the nozzle. Here are two examples of a converging diverging nozzle. These are both printed on my Form 4 resin printer using this awesome clear resin. Both of these nozzles have an identical throat diameter to the converging nozzle. When designing a nozzle, the throat diameter is one of the most important details because it determines the mass flow. Another important detail is the diverging section area ratio. The correct area ratio can be calculated using the pressure ratio of the nozzle, and it's important to get this right because or else your nozzle will be overexpanded or underexpanded. All right, but enough of all that math. Let's look back at these nozzles. One of these is a straight walled diverging section, which is extremely easy to make, and you'll see it a lot in DIY projects on YouTube. The other nozzle has more of a bell shape, and this is what you'll see a lot in industry. The correct way to make this is using something called method of characteristics, which is way out of scope for this video. But it's really cool, and I'll put up a picture of my design here. But does this bell shape even help? How much different are they? There's only one way to find out. All right, next up is a converging diverging nozzle. This one just has straight walls. Three, two, one. This nozzle made a peak of 29.3 newtons of thrust. That's four and a half percent more than the converging only nozzle. All right, but what does this look like in Schlieren? 
When the nozzle starts flowing, you'll notice there's very few shocks in the exhaust. And that's a good thing. This means the nozzle is expanding the air to atmospheric pressure and everything is designed correctly. However, as the pressure in the tank drops, you will notice that the nozzle starts over expanding the flow. This creates some really nice looking shock diamonds. Although this looks really good, it's actually not great for efficiency. The downside of this straight wall design is that the straight walls of the diverging section will actually direct some of the flow at an angle, and this will reduce the overall nozzle efficiency. To solve this, we can use a bell nozzle. This nozzle straightens out at the end and keeps all the flow moving in the axial direction. Will this actually be any better though? Let's find out. All right, next up is this, which is a bell nozzle designed with method of characteristics. Bell nozzle, three, two, one. Woo! This nozzle made a peak thrust of 29.9 newtons, which is 7% more than the converging only nozzle. So clearly this bell nozzle design is the best way to go. Looking at the Schlieren video, the exhaust from the nozzle seems well expanded and everything looks like it was designed properly. Comparing it to the straight diverging section nozzle, the flow near the walls does seem like it's slightly more axial, but the visual differences are very small. However, the bell nozzle did create 2.5% more thrust, so clearly performance has improved. While an extra 0.6 newtons of thrust doesn't seem like a lot at this scale, when you scale this up to something that's propelling an entire vehicle, this could be the difference of making it to your destination or not. Now what I really want to test is what the supersonic flow will do to something like a tomato. But before we do that, let's talk about another way to visualize flow, and that's CFD. CFD stands for Computational Fluid Dynamics, and it's basically simulating fluid flow, but in a computer. I ran CFD solutions of both the converging and the converging diverging nozzles. And what's great about CFD is you can visualize pretty much any parameter, such as Mach number or even pressure. For example, you can see that the maximum Mach number exiting this bell nozzle is over 2.1, which is crazy. You can also see that the nozzle is expanding the flow correctly. Measuring the pressure at the exit of the nozzle, it's only about one PSI lower than atmospheric pressure. This means we might want to reduce the exit area a little bit, but overall it's still really good. In contrast, the flow exiting the converging only nozzle is over 47 PSI. We can also double check our measurements by seeing how the thrust compares. Both the thrust values are very similar to what I measured, which means my measurements are probably correct and also the CFD is probably valid. It's also worth noting that for nozzles and flow fields this simple, you can actually calculate things like thrust just as accurately with hand calculations. But then you don't get to see any pretty pictures. So with the CFD out of the way, I wanted to get some video of a very overexpanded nozzle which would create really good shock diamonds. So I printed this. This nozzle has about double the area ratio that it should, which means the exhaust will be well below atmospheric pressure. This should look pretty cool. Overexpanded nozzle. Three, two, one. Yeah, I think it's safe to say this looks pretty cool. Question now becomes, what will one of these nozzles do to a tomato? Let's find out. Fasten this guy down. Three, two, one. They didn't do anything. That's one tough tomato. Now I of course recorded this in Schlieren too, and it's honestly one of the most amazing clips I've ever seen. You can see the shock waves forming in the exhaust of the nozzle, and then they hit the tomato and actually deflect upwards. In the bit that's actually already reflected off the tomato, you can even see more shocks forming. This blew my mind when I saw it. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and put a cut through the skin. That should help the air get in there. Two, one. All right, so what do we learn by doing all this? The number one thing is that nozzle design is all about pressure ratio. A good rule of thumb is if your pressure ratio is below 1.9, then you should only use a converging nozzle. If it's above 1.9, then you can use a CD nozzle, and you can calculate the exit Mach number and the area ratio using these equations. All the tests done in this video were static, but it's worth noting that for a vehicle in flight, there are other considerations. Converging nozzles have a max exit velocity of Mach 1, which means they can't really be used to fly much faster than that. This is one of the key reasons you see converging diverging nozzles on rockets and fighter jets. I know this video is a little bit different than usual, but I think nozzles are really cool and the aerodynamics behind them is awesome. If you want to see a different type of nozzle, like maybe an aerospike or a CERN nozzle or something like that, let me know down in the comments below. But that's all for this one, so subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.